AstraZeneca has requested emergency use authorization from U.S. regulators for its new treatment to prevent COVID-19 for those who have a poor reaction to vaccines due to a weakened immune system. Yahoo Finance senior health care reporter Anjali Kamani is here with more on this. Anjali. That's right, Brian. So AstraZeneca has been working on this antibody treatment, and it's really uh, aimed for people with weaker immune systems or those who just cannot take vaccines. Uh, it, it is one of those that sort of targets a really new market and one that has been largely underserved by the current vaccines. Should be interesting to see how the FDA and the CDC following that, uh, t you know, take a look at this and, and uh, and, and decide on that. So meanwhile, we also know that Johnson & Johnson is also applying for an emergency use authorization for its booster dose. And that we knew was sort of coming down the pike. We already had heard from the FDA, which uh, whose advisory panel has set a meeting already for October 14 through 15 to discuss this booster shot. Of course, we know the data came out earlier this year with uh, uh, proving that not only is the first shot pretty strong and, and has consistent protection, but the second dose really Really shot up that protection to 94%, putting it in the arena of the mRNA vaccine protections. So all of that uh, really, uh, you know, centering around the vaccines and protections still, still a major conversation. As we know, vaccinations in the U.S. remain very low compared to other countries. Another bit of news, of course, throughout this pandemic, the National Institutes of Health has been really uh, front and center, especially when it comes to the development of Moderna's vaccine. While the director, Dr. Francis Collins has announced today that he's stepping down at the end of the year. So we're going to be losing someone who was uh, played a major role, really, in the response to the pandemic. He's been at the helm for 12 years, served under three presidents, and uh, really has been a, a person, aside from Dr. Anthony Fauci, who works under him, uh, who has been sort of the face of the government response throughout this pandemic. Back to you guys. Uh Anjali, is there anything more to read into this departure here? Is there you think there's going to be a some some type of shakeup uh, more broadly, or is this a, a one-off thing? Uh, well, there have been some questions about what to expect, especially as we see sort of the tapering off uh, of the pandemic when it starts to become endemic and what will happen there. Uh, no indications of whether or not there are going to be others uh, sort of in terms of a shakeup. But we know that largely speaking, the health agencies have been uh, sort of in flux, like looking over at the FDA, for example, they have uh, yet to name an official uh, commissioner. And we do know that that's a really important agency. So it, it definitely does give a little bit of uncertainty, but no word yet on whether or not this will be a huge shakeup. We also know what happened uh, in the FDA with two other departures earlier this year for the vaccine department. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And Anjali, actually, any update on... The, yeah, ahead. no, I was just going to ask, Anjali, any update on the Merck pill? Uh, any guidepost we should be looking out for? Nothing yet. Uh, I would say that uh, what's really interesting about this conversation about the Merck pill, however, uh, is a lot of discussion about not just uh, its purpose, but also its cost. Uh, and the comparison, a lot of comparisons have been drawn in recent days to the vaccine. So, for example, looking at the vaccine being free, but also costing roughly $20 a dose to the U.S. government. Meanwhile, this pill, which would be a, a five-day uh, a, a treatment plan, is is costing the U.S. government $700, and that's um, coming, uh, according to a stat news article, after the company is, uh, sort of exposed that it, it was going to cost $20 to produce. So this is really going to be interesting how this comes about. As we know, price discussions in the pharma industry have been really front and center, not only uh, just nationally speaking, but also in government, in Congress. That's a large conversation right now. So how the government takes a hold of this conversation is going to be interesting to watch.